Welcome to the third part of how to build your own Leslie 145 using mechanical parts bought online. In this video I'd like to show how to fit the top horn rotor and the treble driver into the cabinet as well as the drive motor for the horn. Handle the twin horn unit with great care. Do not under any circumstances drop it on the floor, it's very brittle and it will break. So handle it carefully and put it on one side in a safe place until you're ready to use it. The best way to fit these horns is to place the horn in the hole in the top of the cabinet and then offer the treble driver up to the horn from underneath. The treble driver needs this spacer in place first. This is just a cardboard spacer that makes sure the horn is at the correct height for the drive motor. Offer the driver up to the horn inside the cabinet and bolt it in place with the three bolts. A few words about drive motors. As I live in the UK, I'm using 240 volt motors. These were difficult to acquire. Most Leslie motors are 115 or 117 volts for the USA market. And the Leslies that came over to England still had 117 or 115 volt motors in them, using a transformer with a center tap to drop the 240 volts from the UK down to the voltage to operate the motors. But in my case, I'm not using a Leslie amplifier so I need motors that will work directly from a 240 volt feed. I'm not sure which model Leslie speaker this motor came out of. It's very similar to the HL822 type, but to have an HL822 and there are 117 volts in that one. However, it's just the job. It has the right kind of pulley. And here you see me using a lower belt to check the alignment of the motor with the horn. In this case, it looks like I'm going to have to either lift the motor or drop the horn slightly to get a better alignment. This upper drive motor is of the more modern Leslie type and the slotted mounting plate allows it to slide back and forth to get the belt tension right. Unlike the earlier models, it does not need an idler pulley, but this means I will have to get hold of a couple of belts of the right type. So that's the two motors fitted, more or less, the bass speaker and the treble horn and driver. I'd now like to mention one or two things about treble drivers. Over the years I've done much experimenting with Leslie speakers. And from a tonal point of view, I've always found the Jensen V21 drivers, the original ones, to be the best sounding. But they are a little on the fragile side if you abuse them. The diaphragms can go off centre and they make a horrible buzzing noise or they can blow all together. Recently I've come across these drivers and they're incredibly cheap. These drivers are marketed under the name Adastra and they are 60 watts RMS handling and 16 ohms. They have a frequency response up to 7K, then you get a severe roll off. That's not a problem because one of the main problems I've always had with drivers, other than these Jensen special design V21s, is that the bandwidth is too good and the organ sounds scratchy and brittle at the top end. But these Adastras are quite mellow. And trying it with a Hammond XK3, I was surprised that it got rid of, almost entirely, the screechiness of the instrument. I'm not going to use these in my Leslie's that I'm building for the studio, I'll use V21s. But they're worth considering for live use. I just make a simple adapter plate to make it bolt into an existing housing for a V21 driver. I do hear that Atlas drivers are supposed to be pretty good, but they are five times the price of this particular model. And for the studio anyway, I'm going to use the V21s as I always have done. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been of some use to you.